Well, you know, when I was a kid growing up, and I, I'm ashamed to admit this now, but I was always embarrassed of my own parents. I was embarrassed of them and a little angry with them. Maybe some of you have had this experience too. I was embarrassed and angry because we were different. We were the only oriental family on the block there in the Detroit suburbs in the 1970s. And so when I went off to school, one of my classmates said to me, why are you Chinese? As if to say, what are you doing here? You know, we were then in the process of digging a hole to the other side of the globe. You know, you would expect when we popped out in China, we only got about three feet before our parents put a stop to that ugly hole in their backyard. But you would expect to see people who look like me on the other side of the world. Well, I wasn't sure why I was Chinese either, because nobody else was, but I suspected it was because of my parents. So I went home and I said to my mother, why are we Chinese? And, and she didn't have any better an answer than I did. And so I was angry with them because when I was teased and taunted and I would come home, my parents would say to me, you should try harder to fit in. And of course, my, par my teachers would say, oh, just uh, say sticks and stones will break my bones, but words can never hurt me. And my parents never quite understood when I explained what was happening. I was always eager to, to grow up, to be like my dad, to go off to work, to put on a coat and tie, to shave and to drive and so on, because I thought this was just the cruelty of childhood, and that once I was an adult, I wouldn't face any of this. And so I was embarrassed of my parents because they, they had accents, they ate funny looking, funny smelling food. You know, my dad was always trying to get me to have some chicken feet or sea cucumber or something along those lines. And when we watched television, they didn't laugh at the right times. And <laughs> if there was a dispute with the phone company or something, they'd need my help writing a letter. And so there was this awkward role reversal that so many of us have experienced. And, and that made me embarrassed because I, I knew that my friend's parents would never be my parents' friends, that somehow we stood out in a way that wasn't admired, that wasn't positive. This is before people started to celebrate diversity. It was during the melting pot era when everyone had to assimilate and I so desperately wanted to be just like the kid next door. You know, my mother would spend the afternoon making a traditional Chinese meal with a steamed whole fish and four or five courses. And my brothers and I, we would sit down and turn up our noses at it and refuse to eat it because what we wanted was hot dogs and hamburgers and pizza. And so it was much later that I came to see that my parents, when I had told them about these racial incidents, that they didn't blame me as I thought they had, but they blamed themselves. What I mean by that is that I was naive and I was wrong. My parents faced all of the same, only it was much more sophisticated, the adult version of the teasing and taunting, and there was nobody they could complain to, and they didn't understand that it was racial discrimination. They didn't understand when they encountered it at the workplace or when they just went shopping or when they met a store clerk who was rude and refused to serve them or in neighborhoods where they couldn't move. My parents, in fact, all along blamed themselves. They thought it was because they had accents, because they ate those funny smelling foods, they didn't know when to laugh when watching TV and they needed help writing letters to the phone company. My parents just assumed that my brothers and I, having been born in the United States, we would fit in automatically. We would be accepted. There wouldn't be any problem. My parents didn't speak the language of civil rights because quite literally, they spoke another language. And so over time, I came to forgive them. I came to see that there was something that neither they nor I as a child was aware of that it was represented by the kid doing the karate moves and everything else that that symbolized, even if that by itself was inconsequential because there was so much more from the murder of Vincent Chin in 1982, a 27-year-old Chinese American out celebrating his upcoming wedding who was bludgeoned to death with a baseball bat by a father and stepson, the former uh, uh, 
supervisor at an auto plant because they blamed him for the success of Japanese car companies using racial epithets and obscenities when they encountered him. It was in that moment that I saw how important it was to stand up and speak out, not just on my own behalf, but for my parents who would not have been listened to, wouldn't have been respected because of those accents, because their English was not praised. And not just for them, but for the other communities, for all those who shared this common cause with us, a vision, a dream, the American dream, the ability to write the scripts of our own lives, to declare that we were individuals, that we were here as equals, that we were stakeholders, members of the body politic, that we aspired to what our neighbors and coworkers and colleagues aspired to no differently than to raise our families, to be able to honor our traditions, to be successful, to be able to participate above all in this great diverse democracy. And so that's what led me to the causes that I've believed in. It's what I think causes all of us to gather here in this room tonight. Because all of us have these same stories, maybe a generation removed but we understand, it resonates with us, these stories of immigrants, these stories of not quite belonging, of believing oneself to be an American, but having that doubted at every turn by others who are not so sure.